Welcome to the Core Women Podcast, the place for women entrepreneurs, authors, and self-starters looking to build community and gain valuable insight through expert interviews with women at the top of their game. Join your host, podcaster, producer, expert coach, entrepreneur, and author, Dr. Summer Watson, as she aims to inspire and empower you through these candid conversations. Lean in and embrace the journey. It's time to start the show. Here's your host, Dr. Summer Watson. Today on the show, I'd like to welcome Lindsay Andriotti, who is a mentor, muse, imaginal author, educator, and incredible entrepreneur. She is the creator of Brilliance Enterprises and the Imaginal Society. Her superpower is to help folks find the awesome sauce that lives within each person. She has worked and honed her skills in the entrepreneurial space for over 25 plus years in the areas of sales, HR, and organizational development. Lindsay has founded more than 20 businesses and has been an advisor to hundreds of companies. In 2020, her goal is to bring a big dream to 10 innovation-focused universities this year and listen to the dreams of their students. We have a great deal to talk about, so let's dive right into this, Lindsay, and welcome. Thank you, Summer. What a lovely introduction, and I really appreciate you having me today. Well, I am so glad that you're here because we really do have a lot to talk about, and you have so much to tell us. So, Lindsay, (laughs) before we take a glance at your professional background and journey, give us a peek into your personal journey, where you grew up, and how some of these interests may have contributed to your professional passions. Yay. Oh, I love this question. Well, it all started, no, just kidding. I actually, (laughs) you got to start somewhere, but it did start in 1966, which I love that year. Uh, There's something about it. I love cars from that year. Anyway, I uh, was born in 1966 in Sacramento, California to a mother who was attending Berkeley and a father who was in the Navy. So if you can imagine what things were like in the 60s and who those two individuals are, they immediately, within three months of my birth, moved to Bremerton, Washington, where I grew up for my entire life, 52 years, and I'll get to that in a minute, in Washington State. Traveled a lot, went to other places, but by and large, my history was in one corner of the United States. And I think that's really interesting, and that did shape a lot of who I became. I got interested in entrepreneurship when I was, oh, I don't know, seven and was building forts in the woods. And we would, uh, my friends and I would actually bring kids out there to explore the fort for a small, you know, cookie fee or something like that. Wow. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I was a real creator and a real nature lover. You know, I love this planet. And I knew that when I was really small. Fast forward through high school, I thought I was going to be the next Barbara Walters who would get to interview everyone on the planet to find out what their story was because I just love that. That pushed me into becoming a recruiter. And so I ended up being a recruiter for companies in the early days that then moved me into organization development because I love process and people and profit, all of it. So Started moving into that, got my master's degree in that, and then found startup land. Mm -hmm. And I have never looked back. I love startups. I am a change agent. I am the kind of person who really enjoys the formulation of something that's brand new. And that created my whole career. So I started my company in 2001 called Brilliance Enterprises after multiple different companies, including many consulting firms and other stuff that I did along the way. And I've not looked back. I just, I love watching people discover, live and launch their brilliance into the world. And that's what I'm about. Oh my gosh. I love that. Discover, live and launch. That mm-hmm. is awesome. I love those key words. Now, I love your story, your personal journey. You touched on so much there and how this has contributed to your passions and entrepreneurship. I also love that your mom and dad, she went to Berkeley. Your dad was in the Navy. I went to Berkeley. My husband was in the Marine Corps. And it's on the West Coast. I know, right? So wow. we I have a lot in common. That's awesome. <laughs> and didn't didn't you say you were from Davis, right? 
I am or, actually from Santa Cruz, California. Santa Cruz. Okay. Well, there yeah. you go. And they were in Sacramento. Yeah. So there you go. Wow. And I actually lived in Sacramento during my husband's recruiting days. So, and worked at across from UC Davis Med Center. So at Sacramento wow. County Mental Health. I know. So oh, there are okay. so many commonalities there. This is really fun. I know. So <laughs> by reading your bio, talking to you in the past, I know you're a passionate entrepreneur. Mm. and mentor. Tell us how this calling somewhat developed. You kind of touched on that and how you have mentored other folks. Mm. You know, the calling showed up, I would definitely say sometime in my college days at Pepperdine University. And what I'm doing today is what I wish someone would have done for me when I was 19 years old. And I'll I'll explain a little bit of history. I really am in service to imaginals. And I'll explain what that is. And it's because I am one. (laughs) And I have been one since I was young. And what an imaginal is in the in nature is when a caterpillar feels the call to go to the chrysalis and turn into a butterfly. They're not exactly sure why they're going, but they feel the call and they go, they build the chrysalis, and then they liquefy. They drop their entire identity as a caterpillar. And what emerges, the first cells that emerge from the goo, I call it, are the imaginal cells. And those imaginal cells find one another and begin to make things like antenna, eyeballs, wings, whatever it is that needs to be created in this new thing called a butterfly. And it's all you know, DNA driven and preordained to some degree. And I feel like we, each one of us is an imaginal cell of some kind. And if we can find our crew that we're supposed to be working with, oh my goodness, what we could create for the world. So that's what I wish I had when I was 19 years old. I was totally an imaginal. I could think way outside the box. I wanted to work with Disney You know, that was my dream company back in the day because it was all about imagination and imagineering. Well, and that's what they called the creators, imagineers. Exactly. Yeah, that's right up your alley. (laughs) Right up my alley. And for some reason, the universe had to push me in a slightly different direction so that I could find my people the way that I'm finding them now, which is through entrepreneuring. They're business people. They love to create stuff out of nothing. And I would actually say many of them are social impact entrepreneurs as well. One of the other things, aspects of myself that I learned is that I was quite a humanitarian. I'd give you the shirt off my back if I thought it would really be in service to what was happening in the moment. And I I see there are a lot of young people today. um, And when I say young people, I'm going for like under 30, 35. (laughs) (laughs) And I look at him and I go, you guys are on track for creating the world that we all want to live in. And you can't be mentored by people who lived in Caterpillar world because it doesn't work the same way. And I feel really fortunate that I am able to get out of my own way and not be in Caterpillar world. I can mentor them to follow their intuition, to follow their heart, to have mental fitness for the journey they're about to take so that they can build what they want to build for our new world. And that's the the secret sauce of Imaginal Ventures. Oh, I absolutely adore that. That is so (laughs) awesome because I think a lot of times when we go to school or we were growing up in the education system, a lot of times that creativity is stunted. It's not necessarily invited because we're following a curriculum or we're doing A, B, and C and they've got to get through their syllabus. So it's like a lot of that is just kind of put to the side. Correct. And the number one killer of creativity is fear. Right. So what have we been dealing with in a pandemic? And the last couple of years, all fear all the time. And people are afraid of so many different things, not the least of which is being ill or having a loved one pass. Those are not fun experiences, I know, but it's also, there's so much more to life 
than focusing on the fear. And, and I think that's where you're going with that. And creativity is our birthright. We are meant to create and create from the heart and allow the head to put it into action. But our hearts know what's possible. We do. Absolutely. I agree with that tremendously. And yet it's sometimes not knowing what the first step is. And that's why I asked you about mentorship, because Mm -hmm. a lot of times the way we're raised, what is modeled for us, isn't necessarily that first step or embracing that creativity. It is get that degree, go to A, B, and C, da, 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 da. Here's your trajectory. Maybe that's not the journey for everybody. As you said, we have this innate ability. We have it in our DNA to be creative. But how do each of us show and express that creativity? You know, this is the fun part, honestly, Summer. And if I, if I had a magical pill that I could give people that would just say, okay, this is all how it's going to work. And you just take this and you'll be able to be creative. That would be amazing. But there's sort of a, it's a bit of a scale. So if your fear is too high and you've got too much on your plate and you're trying to do things that support your caterpillar identity. We'll just call it that the identity that you grew up with, that you were supposed to be. Okay. All of that weighs heavily against being creative or following a passion or allowing life to live through you. right? Right. So step one generally is learning how to quiet that side that wants to be caterpillar. There's a process for that. And simultaneously kind of raising the side that wants to be the creative, passionate one that has an imaginal job to do. And one of the things that I suggest to people, you know, there's both sides of this balancing scale have to get into alignment or balance. Otherwise it doesn't work. I can't go too far on the other side either, or I don't get anything done and I don't pay my bills and and everything goes wonky, you know? So there's this sort of thing that we're dealing with. Well, in the process of learning who we are. It's amazing how quickly you can drop the fear a little bit more and raise the frequency or the ideation process in your own self about what's possible. And my friend Betsy says she's a possibilitarian, you know, (laughs) that's what I feel like. Everything is possible as long as we can get out of our own way. And There is a systematic way to approach it for sure. I don't know how much time we have, but there are (laughs) anybody who wants to learn more about this can look at how to drop your identity, you know, look for things on how to let go of your conditioning, your conditioned mind, right? And on the flip side, it's how to cultivate what your heart's desire is. And I've been coaching and mentoring people for their heart's desire for 20 plus years. And it's incredible what can happen when they're lit up from within and are moving towards something that they know is theirs to do. Mm -hmm. Well, let me point something out here. Your passion is just so vibrant and glowing. It is out there. You can see it. You can feel it. It just, it's so palpable. So it, I know that you're passionate about this. I know that you're an incredible mentor because Here's the thing. You just gave an example of using that left and right brain, right? So you're creative, Mm -hmm. yet you're strategic. You Mm -hmm. know process. I Mm -hmm. love that. I am all about (laughs) that. You're all about that. (laughs) I talk about it all the time. And here's the thing. You also mentioned conditioning. And Mm -hmm. we have been conditioned. And I talk about this all a lot. Mm -hmm. We have been conditioned by our parents grandparents, people who have raised us, clergy, educators, everyone, everyone. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. I also talk about values Mm -hmm. and how those align with what you're doing today, what your passions are, because a lot of times we tend to adopt values Mm -hmm. from those people that taught us value about values and beliefs, right? That's Mm -hmm. not to say that they aren't great values, but are they your values? Right. Do they align right. with you? And okay. a lot of times that's 
what's stopping us. That's what, helps. That's what gets in our way of taking those first steps Absolutely. in the way of that process that you're talking about. And I love that you're process oriented because as you said, it creates that balance between creativity and process that we need to pay our bills and mm-hmm. yet still remain creative. Yes. And yes. Be part of the solution, right? And, yeah. and pay your bills while doing it. I, I often encourage people who are maybe listening and they're kind of going, I don't really know what I would go work on if I was going to be socially um, responsible or doing something for humanity. Yeah. I say, go take a peek at the SDG 17. These are the 17 sustainability goals that are facing humanity. And I say, read through those. It takes less than 10 minutes to read through them and just notice where your heart feels called. What I, what I've noticed is when I give people this assignment, they're blown away by the thing that says, Oh, I, I'm kind of interested in that. You know, it could be anything from clean water to clean energy, to education, to my number one thing that I'm attracted to. That's like, I call it SDG 18 is apathy. Mm-hmm. How do you get people off the couch to even look at the 17 sustainability goals right. <laughs> so that they can get involved or, or wrangled in, you know? Yeah. So that's, that's a, a process that one could undertake to just poke around a little bit. I am passionate about educating imaginals mm-hmm. and getting them into a space where they feel empowered and aligned enough with themselves that they can effectively do what they're here to do. And the word effective means a lot to me. It's, it's more than just, I read a book and I'm going to go do this thing. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. It can take years. It's Jedi training. It really is Jedi training, but once you've got it, eh, you just continue and you keep growing and expanding and finding more Jedi. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) I completely agree. So you talk about in, in your bio, one of the things I absolutely love is your superpower to help folks find their awesome sauce, which is what you've touched on. Mm-hmm. Tell us a bit more okay. about how you draw out from others their mm-hmm. superpowers. As you had mentioned, how do you get somebody off that couch to really <laughs> tap into their superpower? That is, you know, it's one of those things that I'm still working on. Truthfully, I I have tools and skill. If someone says, hi, I'd love to do this with you. It's really great. I can do that with them. The challenge is getting them to raise their hand and say hello, right? So here's what I would share with your audience. The way I see humans is in a model I call the brilliance model. It was in my first book, and I'm actually going to write a second book of just dialing right into this. Each of us has four kind of areas and I'm going to form it in the shape of a diamond because it does feel like a diamond to me. You have mental fitness, Mm -hmm. how you handle your mind and your brain, both. You have physical fitness, how healthy and well is your body? How does it move and what does it do? And is it strong? Is it lean? Is it whatever it is? Okay. We have spiritual fitness which is our connection to source and our ability to follow intuition and our ability to know um, things beyond what's just shown in front of us. And then we have emotional fitness, which is how do we deal with these things called emotions? And can we rapidly discover and rapidly recover when we get triggered, injured, hurt, whatever the words are emotionally, all of that comprises who we are and everybody has their own signature. That's the brilliance model. Okay. Well, (laughs) to get somebody to move into what we just talked about, which is finding their unique, awesome sauceness, they need to know where they are in that model. So right now I would rate myself about a five in my physical fitness. I've gone through some health challenges this year that have been good. Really, I learned a lot, but man, my body is still recovering and still making changes through hormonal stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm going, hmm, this is an area of focus, but I am observant and know enough to know that's where I'm at. So my awesome sauceness would probably not be to do, uh, you know, a marathon or an American Ninja Warrior, you know, workout. That's not going to be my thing, right? Not right now. That's not part of my awesome sauce today. It was my awesome sauce when I was 18. Right. I was, you know, so we all change and, oh, yeah. and shift in those four quadrants. And we often get called to one 
or the other quadrant in any given year. So whatever's going on, you might see one be higher than another. So I'm developing a tool around this so you can kind of do a baseline measure. Where am I yeah. right now? Right. As soon as you know where you are, then you can say where you'd rather be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what would take my health to a 10? I know what that is. And I'm working on it, including changing my exercise and the what I eat and things like that in order to balance it out and get myself back to a 10, where for me, it feels like a 10. Yeah. There is no right or wrong. And there is no other judge other than ourselves. It, it's right. It's my awesome sauce and it's your awesome sauce and what you want it to be and how you want to dial it in and add a little more pepper or delete a little bit of this or whatever. That's great. Everyone gets to do it their way. So the process of mentorship needs to be aimed right at that. Okay. It's in unleashing the awesome sauce. It's allowing for someone to know where they are, not judge it as bad and wrong, but to make strides towards what they would prefer. And that's what we call, you know, living your best life. It was when you know how to do that for yourself and you can, and nobody else outside of you has to do anything. Yeah, that is fantastic. I love that model and how you're developing it. And it really does align with that whole ideology of metamorphosis that you're talking about, that you started talking about, that we began this conversation with. So yeah. this is fantastic. Everything is in alignment here with what you're talking about. So that's, my word. <laughs> <laughs> that's your word. Yeah, that's my word. Alignment <laughs> is the word. Word. <laughs> Oh my goodness, you cracked me up. So you have said that in 2022, it's your goal to bring a big dream to 10 innovation focused universities this year in 2022. So, and listen to the dreams of the students. Please tell me more, tell the listeners more about what this is. Awesome. We're calling it the big dream tour. And the objective is to find 10 cities with 10 sort of off the beaten path kinds of universities that just maybe are filled with imaginals. That would be ideal. So I'll give you an example of one that we've talked to already that's like just right up our alley. And that is Daytona State College. And it's a place where people go because they're pursuing their passions sometimes after their first career even started. And they're like, "Hmm, I didn't want to do that. I want to do this over here. They're filled with imaginals. So they're eager to have a group of us come for an entire day and remind them how to dream again, build bridge plans to their dreams, show them what it takes to make a dream into reality, and then offer follow-up so that we can find out whose dreams are what needing to be connected to other people who may be in another school somewhere completely different. Like I said, I'm working on education. I'm 110% sure that there are imaginals all over this country who care about what I'm talking about, who should be working with me, right? We don't need to invent any wheels. I want to work together, collaborate. And that's going to be the key word for this imaginal dream tour. So the tour will kick off February 4th here in Daytona. And I don't know where it's going to go yet. We have about 10 cities earmarked. And what's fun is we're kind of following our intuition and waiting to see who shows up and says, hi, we'd like to do something here in this place. Okay. (laughs) Um, I have a hunch there's going to be one in your area in Washington or Virginia. (laughs) (laughs) I And I'm pretty sure that my partner, Betsy, we're going to do one in Denver. So, Mm -hmm. and then there's one that's brewing in Los Angeles already. So These days are meant to be available to anybody who wants to come and we're going to focus them and try to get the universities to promote this idea of dreaming again. And can we connect each other to our dreams? That's the goal. I love it. I love it. I'm excited to get going. I'm excited for you. And I'm excited to collaborate with you on this. So I'm excited. So as, as we come to the close of the interview, my last question is always, If you could leave the listeners with some words of wisdom, what would those be? I love this question because it's so near and dear to my heart. Never stop dreaming. There is so much more that is meant to come through you than you even know is possible. So don't bother with what's happening in the 3D world outside of you. 
start dreaming and get on with it because we're ready to have you show up as an imaginal. Oh man, that's so awesome, Lindsay. And thank you so much for joining me on the Core Women podcast today. My pleasure. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks, Summer. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You can connect by following Lindsay Andriotti on LinkedIn, Instagram, and at brilliantenterprises.com and imaginalsociety.mn.co. Thank you for joining us on the Core Women Podcast with Dr. Summer Watson. We're so glad you're here and would love to connect more with you. Find us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Core Women and on Twitter at Core Women One. For more about Core Women and Dr. Watson, visit corewomen.com. Want more support and resources for amazing women like you? Great! Join Dr. Watson and Jen Fontanilla at the Life, Love & Money Collective, a core women production that aids in understanding the key traits that might be getting in the way of living a life that you are absolutely passionate about. Connect with Summer and Jen and find out more at thelifeloveandmoney.com. 